I am grateful to Buddy James for inviting me to give an introduction to interscalar cosmology. Now I invite you to a journey through time that will lead to the discovery of the fundamental fractal of the universe. See you! Okay, here we are. Thanks to Benoit Mandel Broad, we have learned that fractality is one of the fundamental principles of the universe. In his book, Fractals, Form, Chance and Dimension, he writes that a fractal structure consists of reduced size copies of itself. Fractals have two basic characteristics self-similarity and scale invariance. The Sierpinski triangle shows both characteristics. Every triangle consists of always three times smaller triangles. Thanks to the constant scaling factor three, the Sierpinski triangle is scale invariant. As a consequence of scale invariance, the smaller the elements of a fractal, the smaller the distance between them. As we can see, smaller triangles are closer to each other than larger triangles. By the way, the Matryoshka can also serve to demonstrate the fractal principle. The volume of the next larger doll is approximately twice that of the previous one. In 1982, in his book, The Fractal Geometry of Nature, Mandelbrot shares his discovery that fractality is a fundamental principle which can be observed in nature. Let's look at some examples of natural structures with features of fractality. For example, a tree is partly a fractal. In wintertime, its fractality becomes more visible. We can observe scaling. The distance between large branches is large. The distance between small branches is small. And self-similarity. A branch looks like a little tree. Our organs embed fractal structures. As we can see in the median section of the brain, the vascular distribution of the heart and the kidneys, and of course, the pulmonary tree. Even a flash is fractal. This is not a flash, but a Google satellite photo of a river. Under the microscope, we can discover the fractal structure of a leaf with the primary and secondary rib. This is not a leaf, but a river in Spain. This image seems like a vegetable, but it is a Google satellite photo of the Alpine mountains in Austria. The green areas are valleys and the white areas is snow on the mountains. Almost all landscapes on Earth or even on Mars show features of fractality. Naturally, as the distribution of the cities and villages follows the fractality of the landscape. Hence, the distribution of urban structures is mostly fractal, the distances between big cities are usually greater than the distances between small villages. Satellite images evidence that. Please watch my video, Cradle of Civilization, the hidden master plan, on my YouTube channel, Interscalar, to learn more about this fascinating topic. In 1610, Johannes Kepler asked a profound question. How is it possible that the night sky is dark despite the infinity of stars in the universe? In 1826, the German astronomer Heinrich Olbers again described the same paradox, now known as the Olbers paradox. 
Benoit Mandelbrot offered an explanation. Indeed, there are billions of stars in the galaxy, but the night sky is dark because of the fractal distribution of the stars. In fact, our galaxy seems to be a fractal formation. Every light point in this image is a star. Fractal is also the distribution of galaxies and clusters of galaxies in the observable universe. This image demonstrates the distribution of the clusters closest to our galaxy. Every light point in this image is a galaxy. Clusters of galaxies form the cosmic network, which is fractal and appears to be a tissue, very similar to the neural tissue of our brain. Fractality is the unifying principle of embedding that creates a universe of universes. We don't live in the universe. We are parts of it. We are parts of the same cosmic creation. Observations suggest that nature and probably the whole universe are fractal. However, one question still remains unanswered. Why are they fractal? There are two reasons. First, fractal replication is the easiest way to grow because it is scaled repetition. That's why everything grows in a fractal way. This time-lapse video shows the fractal growth of fungi. The pattern resembles the fractal rib of a leaf. Another reason is that a wave is the most efficient way of moving. That's why everything oscillates. The spectrum of an oscillation is fractal and creates fractal patterns. Natural waves are fractal, as we can see in this record of the sea waves. The distances between small waves are small. The distances between larger waves are larger. Even one drop can cause a fractal wave on a water surface. A vibrating and rotating star can cause a fractal wave in a molecular cloud and form a planetary system. Let's watch this sound experiment. It shows the behavior of sand particles on a vibrating metal plate. What the particles are doing? Obviously, they avoid resonance areas of maximum vibration and accumulate in rest areas of minimum vibration. Orbits are forming. With the increase of the frequency, the pattern increases complexity. However, what is it that makes the pattern stable? What makes the solar system stable? Actually, the stability of planetary systems is one of the unsolved fundamental problems in physics. Please watch my video, Mysteries of Science, Gravitation, on this topic. Orbital resonance can excite, destabilize, and even destroy a planetary system. This can happen when orbital periods approach simple integer ratios like one half, two third, or three fourth. This is why the orbital periods in the solar system are in irrational ratios. Euler's number 2.718, the base of natural logarithms, 
is not only irrational, but transcendental. And that makes orbital resonance impossible. This is why the ratios of the main orbital periods approximate Euler's number and its square root. The natural logarithmic scale evidences the scale invariance of the solar system. The ratios of the orbital periods approximate integer paths of Euler's number and its square root. Furthermore, we discover the scale symmetry around Jupiter's orbital period. While the orbital periods follow Euler's number and its square root, the orbital distances follow the cubic root of Euler's number. Please watch my video, The Secret of Euler's Number, on this topic. Euler's number and its roots stabilize not only the solar system, but also exoplanetary systems like TRAPPIST-1. In my paper, Physics of Transcendental Numbers Meets Gravitation, I have analyzed the orbital periods of 1,430 exoplanets. Furthermore, I have shown that the orbital periods derive from the oscillation period of the electron. In other words, the orbital periods of planets are of subatomic origin. Venus orbital period is stabilized by the 63rd power of Euler's number. Jupiter's orbital period by the 66th power, and Pluto's orbital period by the 69th power. Please watch my video, The Secret of the Electron, on this topic. Euler's number is indeed a universal stabilizer. Euler's number stabilizes the atom and makes possible biological life. Euler's number and its roots stabilize the electrical activity of the brain and many other biological functions like respiration and heartbeat. Please watch my video, The Secret of Life, encoded by Euler's number, on this topic. In this way, Euler's number unites all processes so that they become parts of the same universe. Transcendental numbers make possible interstellar communication in real time. Calling the stars is not impossible. In my video, I explain how that could be done. In my video, The Structure of Time, I explain how transcendental numbers determine the flow of time. And Euler's number plays a key role in this. The transcendental melody of creation forms the fundamental fractal of the universe. And the electron is the cosmic metronome. The numbers on the logarithmic scale are powers of Euler's number. In this way, the Hindu number 108 gains a new sense. Biological life occupies the center of scale symmetry of the fundamental fractal. Thanks for watching.